What is good? Weak pop to start it off, but we got a banger for you. We're on to the second one of our rookie profiles. Jay Wayne with the bottle pop. I got the craft pop is never that great. So Hit or cheers miss. to uh, Charleston Craft Breweries here. Shout out to our boys at the Revelries. I'm actually cheating on them. I'm drinking a, uh, a free house. Organic lager. Another another Charleston brew. I got the Ru R Ramblin' Rubis. Boom. Sour. We're on to Pucker our, up, sucker. We're on to our second rookie breakdown here. We did Traylon Burks last week, so if you missed that one, go ahead and check that one out. Today we're going to do Drake London or London Drake. I'm not sure which name is better. I think I've come to the conclusion that Drake London is the best name you could have. I've called them both. Um... Just sometimes it just it does seem to come out of my mouth a little better, London Drake. But I feel like Drake London is the better name because Drake London seems like it's like Jersey Tom or you know uh, <laughs> Columbia Phil or you know he's. I don't think he can go wrong either way. He's uh, he's definitely one one in the name draft. Strong strong in the name draft this uh, this go round. But hey, before we get started. I would go ahead and subscribe because we got all sorts of stuff coming at you. We got ADP reviews. Um, we got early offseason targets that's going to come your way. We're going to do a final rookie report. We're going to keep it rolling. We did a little Cam Akers last week. Um, so we're not just going to be hitting profiles. We're going to try to sprinkle in a smattering of other things. But keep it locked and loaded for some profiles. We're bringing other guys on uh, to talk about some of these guys, give you a different opinion. And we'll be doing mocks once we've gathered enough evidence to properly uh, rate these guys. So properly rated. Without further ado, hit that subscribe, like, comment below. Maybe tell us who you want to see next. I know we saw Garrett Wilson in there. Maybe we'll hit him next. We don't know, but let me hear what you got to say. Uh, appreciate all the love on the last video. You ready to roll? Yeah, let's hit it. Ready to roll. All right, Drake London, wide receiver, USC, 6'5", 210. Um, he's 20 years old currently. Uh, four-star recruit, also a four-star basketball recruit at a Moore Park High School. He and what? He played basketball? Yeah. No way. He sure did. What do you know? Um, he had offers from Notre Dame, uh, Oregon, Wisconsin, among other schools. Uh, I th believe he was a wide receiver 35 out of all of the wide receivers. Um, so I uh, got an interesting guy here, a little bit different than the last prospect, a little taller and, and skinnier, not quite as muscular and, and freight train-like. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of break all that down in a little bit. We're going to start with some of the, the raw numbers, but just hitting you with a little background to get going. Um, his, his, his coach, Clay Helton, comped him to Mike Evans. Um, he himself, uh, that be Drake London, says that he watches a lot of Megatron. Um but he's built a lot more like Mike Evans, so he tries to mimic a little bit more of what Mike Evans does. Um, and this is just a kind of a pretty quiet, humble, hardworking guy. Seems pretty well grounded from all the information that I could gather. Um, a lot of people talk about his skill to kind of quiet the surrounding noise and just kind of go out and do his thing. Never really gets too up, never gets too down. Um, so just seems like a pretty pretty solid guy. Not going to tear his shoulder pads off and leave uh, in the middle of a football game. I think he got a decent character right. uh, here. And sometimes that can be a concern leading in, but it seems like all signs... Um, you know, even if you really like the prospect, is there some some shady things or some or some knucklehead qualities that you know you don't have to worry about? Doesn't seem like that will be the case uh, with Drake London here. It does not. Uh, the really gl uh, glowing uh, quotes from his head coach. Um, I don't. I thought I had it pulled up, um, but just talking about him coming into the 2021 season and how he just went to work and was like, coach, how can I get better? He's already a good player. And then, you know, they were asking him, is he going to move out wide and play some more out wide? And he was like, you know, I'll just do whatever the team wants me to do. And they try to get an interview and he's like, I'm pretty shy around the cameras. Just, just, you know, backs up like that humble right. mentality. And, and, and the coach was like, he just wants to work hard and figure out what to get better at next. And you, you love hearing that type of stuff. All right. So, uh, just again, character seems like it's pretty strong on this guy. Um, the, the metrics and analytics part of this thing, uh, dominator in the 22%. That's a 28th percentile. Not good. Uh, breakout age, though, on fleek, 18.1. Uh, Can't get better than 100th percentile. I think that's good. <laughs> Can't go 115% on this stat. 
Numbers um, don't lie. Yards per reception, 14.9. That's 52nd. Uh, so right in the middle of the pack there. And I think that's just for 2021. Not His career was 13.5. So Yeah. All right, so let's get into the little bit boring counting stats, but you know, kind of want to just go over these for the listeners. If you're if you're watching on uh, YouTube, the, the, you'll see some stats on the on the screen here. Um, so we'll try to go over these as quickly as possible, then get to talking about what we think of the prospect watching a little film. Um, 2019, uh, you can see in here it's his freshman season. He plays 13 games, 54 targets, 39 receptions, 567 uh, yards receiving, and then five touchdowns. Adds a couple rushes in there. That's that breakout age. Uh, so you know, comes in as a freshman and and, and does really well. There's Michael Pittman there, uh-huh. and St. Brown. I mean, then in 2020, with a shortened season for them, comes in and just all, pretty much obliterates those numbers in the amount of games that he played. He only right. plays six games here, but almost. Four- matches receptions right. and yards in half the game right that almost, was a covid year pac 12 only played six games almost beats just about every statistic there so growth you like to see that mm-hmm. uh 40 he's got six games 43 targets 33 receptions 502 yards and three touchdowns adds 15 more rushes for 75 yards um and then here in 2021 we had slot in 19 we had slot in 2020 and now we move out wide in 2021 Mm. um with saint brown and Pittman gone and we have nine games 119 targets and 65 receptions um 1084 yards and seven touchdowns pretty much just obliterates just about anything else that he did um and just outstanding uh senior or junior season here he's declared for the draft um does suffer a little ankle injury at the end not a little anchor a terrible ankle injury uh at the end of the year so you know cut his season a little short that could have been even bigger totals he was on pace to win the bolitnikoff and just just be the best wide receiver bar none and and he's still considered that by a lot of prospects by a lot of scouts yeah do do, uh do any career uh advanced statistics uh yeah, I mean, the, Stick out for the contested catches, 27 of them, 49 missed forced tackles, uh, a, a ton of yak, almost eight, almost 900 yards of yak. Uh, the, the A dot at 9.7, you know, probably not what the people are looking for, I guess, but the yards per reception are, are decent. And, you know, you like a guy that can, uh, that can, that can do a lot of things, re- gather a lot of receptions and go down the field and win. Right. I don't know if that's a terrible A dot, is it? I think they like it above double digits. Mm. I'm not exactly sure. Mm. Don't know what they like. All right. So 2021 in the nine games, some of the advanced numbers here, um, 15th in targets, uh, 28th in yards. This is overall amongst all of his peers. Um, Yards uh, after catch, uh, 463 33rd. uh, Yards per route run, 3.52. That's good for sixth. Um, right with that, that's a stat that the analytical community really likes. Yeah. Yards per route run, so that's that's a strong backing. Burks, Burks was Sixth, up there, um, and, sure. and Drake's right here. Right, and, and and these numbers to me really stand out, given the fact that he only played nine games. You know how he's first in contested catches and third in contested catch rate. Twenty-two missed tackles forced, tied for sixth with only playing nine games. That's right. just really, so, really incredible for so, my man. So like you said before, there was 49 missed tackles forced in the entire career, 22 of them uh, coming from one season. This is 2021 season. So again, just through all those numbers, it's just showing you he could play, played you know, two different positions and then got better every year, and then that was just an absolute monster um, in his senior season, or his junior season. I keep calling it the senior season. Um, so through that part onto, uh, just the general discussion here. So we're kind of coming off the Traylon Burks film here. And when you watch the 19 and the 20 of, of London Drake or Drake London, um, <laughs> he's not a London Drake. He's yeah. A Drake London. Um, you kind of see a little bit of usage similarities, kind of, mm-hmm. you know, decent amount of snaps out of the slot through those first um, two years, some runs, some, some tunnel screens, some, some bubbles, just getting the ball in his hands and letting him do his thing and short for, for, crossers slants. Yeah. For a guy at six, five, you know, it's incredible, it, it, you know, very, very interesting. So then you see 21 and you move him outside and you see what he can do, can really do out there and, and no, nothing lost at all. Right. Um, really just kind of showing Flourished. you the versatility. Yeah. Just really blows up. Now he did play with uh, Slovis for most of his time there. So some familiarity with the quarterback who isn't horrible. I know some people don't like him, but I don't think he was, you know, a detriment to the team necessarily. Nah, not at all. Um, and then Dart came in there a little bit at the end. 
Uh, but like I mentioned, Michael Pittman and Amon Ross St. Brown were there holding it down for, for USC. Previous. Does that maybe affect the dominator a little bit? You know, It, it certainly Context, could. Context, does certainly that matter? It, it, Context it, it, matters here at the may. FF Dynasty. Um, so, but previous to, to London moving outside, he, he was really dominating targets, and then he becomes an absolute target monster um, and really shine doing so once those guys were out kind of the, the the lone show there and I, I know they have other other wide receivers but he was he was just it this year um so really to me checks a lot of boxes sure um, he played basketball did you know that did he he did if you listen to any of the broadcasts he got he he did get drafted or not drafted he, he did get uh, a ride to usc which you know probably helped land him in this position because he wanted to play both sports. Yeah, and he um, did play. I think for the first two years he played basketball and then quit basketball to fully commit to coming into his third year's junior season 2021 to just right. playing football. And so he had a whole off season to just prepare for football. Focus, right, which he hadn't had in forever. Right. Um, and, you know, the proof is in the pudding there. But again, proof is in the pudding. Playing, playing the basketballs. Um did for real though have a positive effect on his game I, the body control is one of is very strong one of the best qualities that i think he possesses um and i think that can definitely come from that basketball background comfortable in the air comfortable uh kind of sliding around knows how to navigate the field again knows how to slide and sit down with his qb uh when he's operating on those intermediate and short routes that he did a lot of and you can see a lot of it and not only is he the quarterback's best friend in that route where maybe his basketball feet kind of helped him out in that perspective um he's also just six five so he's also a quarterback's best friend if he's one-on-one singled up running down the seam right um, and he does kind of toss it up to him. He does an amazing job of coming back to the ball and working right. his way through contact. And then he just he he doesn't wait for it. That's right. a good that's a good call. And the, the versatility of him showing, you know, being that slot guy for the first two years is just an amazing extra quality. And, and like you said, quarter man, quarterback's best friend, um, he, he graded out. As the highest, he had the highest grade for all wide receivers versus zone coverage per PFF in 2021, and the third highest grade versus man coverage. So he he just busting up all coverages. Yeah, he said, "Cover me how you want. I don't yeah. give a fuck." Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was about to hit the big Sean line, but we'll see. Man. <laughs> Not for the kids. Not for the kids. Trick love the kids. Um, so the long speed isn't gonna blow you away, but I think it's it's plenty good. I would agree. Uh, the 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 stat the string of long plays is not quite as magnificent as Traylon's, but still had ten plays over thirty yards that I could count, and then a bunch of twenty yard plays, twenty plus yard plays, which is the the long catch right. metric is twenty plus plays. I mean, he's he's uh, you know he's he's a big chunk guy, and then he yeah. does a lot of that work in the red zone. I so. mean, we talked. We, he comped himself to Mike Evans a little bit. Said he's built a little bit like him. His coach did, and that's kind of what Mike Evans does. There's not a whole lot of like ginormous touchdown runs from Mike Evans, but he will get you those chunk 40, 50, 30s, 20s, 60s when you can throw it up to him and he can go do his thing. So, not unlike kind of the the build of maybe where he's coming from. Sure. Um. Again, but maybe not the biggest, um, greatest long speed, but there's not a whole lot of guys built like him with blazing long speed with these bigger guys. Right. right. That's Megatron. Right. Right. If he if he had a four three five forty, then he'd be Megatron if he added 20 pounds of muscle like that right. just to put Megatron in perspective. Right. Like there's been one of those. Right. One guy. Maybe Randy Moss. Right. And, and it just there's not that many guys with this physique blazing speed but it's it's good enough man i'm not it seems it seems plenty good enough and then again at, at you know these big guys then are kind of the separation with mm -hmm. the length and that they can provide to their quarterback as well as you know I, I i i do think that he has that foot going back to that footwork i do think he has good footwork and i do think at the end of these routes he does usually gain that that step or two and then pile that on with the length uh available you know, I think I think he does create a little bit of separation there. And again, with the big guys, we've said it a lot, but they can be the separation. And then again, how this guy can use his body in a variety of manners, uh, I think, gives him a huge advantage in, in the separation category. Again, going right. back to that basketball background, I know kind of joked about it, but I think that really helps him with his body positioning and and kind of boxing out or using him using his feet to slide kind of all those different things that you would would see 
a basketball player be able to use. And right. I, I know it's played out, but I just it is it's it is, but it's not. I mean, there's there's just so many ways that it plays. Like it's it when the ball you can throw it up high where no one else can go except guys like him and Pittman right. and T Higgins and Cortland Sutton and Megatron. The, you throw it up in the air where no one else, these DBs can't go up that high and get right. it. But then it also plays like in the red zone when he's boxing out. You know, right. he's use, it's not necessarily going up higher than the other guy, but it's just being more physical, more more body, more upper right. body strength, and that that ability to, to toss box it out, around, lean on somebody, and, and, right? Lean that, that's your ball. You right. know, some mentality, and you see that in the red zone. He's just a magnificent red zone threat. Good Love call that with the red him. zone. Yeah, that's just is that's what you're going to get here. It's not soft. He's not. Uh, He's going to score touchdowns. That's what right. I want. That's what I want on my dynasty squad. I want these guys that will go get me these touchdowns because those, right. are, the, those are the make or break plays that will that'll win you a week. Yeah. And, Let me and get I, that touchdown. I, some people say he's not real fast. I don't I don't think he's super fast, but I think he moves really well for a big guy. He's got a, this little leg leg drag, dead leg kind of move he uses often in the, in the open field, and I think that helps him result in some bonus yak for the big fella that we've talked about a good bit. You don't see that a whole lot here. The, the run yak's, blocking. The yak's is, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, uh, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not Traylon Burks. No. It's no, not, he's not a freight train. He's not a locomotive with the ball in his hand. Right. But, but I mean, he was tied for six. Rarely getting tackled the first time. Very rare. Unless it's just in traffic, which, by the way, he's making that catch. And then he's taking that hit. Right. Uh, but he's very rarely going down the first time. Whether it is a juke or just, you know, just stronger and wants it more. He's got a great spin move. He can stiff arm. He can cut. Like, it, it's 22 forced missed tackles. In nine games, everybody else was playing like thirteen games. Yeah. He played four less games and was sixth with the f- most forced missed tackles. So the yak is awesome. And then you brought up the run blocking; like he's getting after it. You right. don't see many plays taken off. Like it's pretty he, damn good to me. He's fucking getting after it. And the yeah. teams that, that value that are gonna. That's just uh, that helps draft capital. That helps scheme. That helps comfort with taking a guy like that because you what, know he's not fucking around what'd you hear there. about chris godwin this year they, they he was so active and so good in the run blocking scheme that it just it spilled over into like we got to get this guy more and, the, and 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 drake is is an active willing blocker um and that's and and you know we talked about that a little bit with Traylon last week i don't think it's an issue there's some lackadaisical moments you don't see really too many of those and Traylon i think, can but right, he doesn't right, put it right. together every single every play single like time and, and drake is 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 out there and i'm not and and I'm not saying that in the pros that maybe Traylon won't be that right. way. I'm but, not saying that separates right, right. Uh, Drake from Traylon, but it is it is a tick in the positive category. And teams like the the uh, the Rams and the Niners, they need their wide receivers to block on the outside. They rely on that, right. and and those are exciting offenses. Maybe that sets them up to go to one of those places. Like I, you know, I don't I don't know, but. That's, right. I hate speculating. I hate the, wow, I hope he goes here. Like, let's just wait and see what happens in April. But, like, it's exciting to see this guy. I'm excited about London Drake, Drake London for sure. Yeah, yeah for me, to really to just kind of put a bow on on talking about him as a whole, He's he does all of the big guy stuff at a high level, but then he's got that short intermediate stuff that really makes him stand out. In other words, like, he does, he, he's a big guy and does all that stuff at a high level, but then from that all that slot play that we saw, he plays that short intermediate stuff like a smaller or medium-sized man, um, and he excels at it. So that, that's just, you know, the floor is is just seems like it's it's so great here and when we talked this a little bit about Traylon where there's probably a really good floor um and and really with Traylon it's all about how high is that ceiling like it's it's fucking ridiculous right um I think the floor is so good on Drake probably not the ceiling being quite as what it possibly could be with the Burks but uh, it, it feels like there's just there's this is a pretty uh a pretty strong candidate all the way through. Yeah, I mean, I would have to lean on the side of maybe Drake being more polished than Burke at this point, right? I think maybe he's a little bit of a safer play at this point. Make a 540 dunk. He did do a 540 <laughs> dunk. I'll try and find that and throw it up after the fact if I can get it. Like, he, you know... Sometimes big well, that's all here, that would see, be right? That's all you need to see is one yeah. good basketball have play. That had him in on Henry that Ruggs. Was, that was it. You see that Henry Ruggs dunk? <laughs> that, was, uh, that means he's good. Um, I, you know, a lot of things compared to Traylon doesn't have that same speed, but 
I don't think Traylon's the fastest human on earth either. I think people are making him like because he recorded at twenty two point three miles per hour. That means he's the fastest. That's the fastest recorded time yeah. ever. So he must be I the think, fastest. I think guy he's ever. A, I think he's definitely a better athlete than than Drake is. Traylon um, is de- is a better athlete. I think so. Than Drake, yeah, but Drake's yeah, more so. polished. And Drake has more down the field experience. He seems less gadgety. Like he spent the first. Well, you few got years, you got to see both aspects for Drake. Right. You got to see that's him go huge. outside and and, and, just and he started crush. in the slot and then migrated right. outside, which he has the body and frame to do so and then just annihilated it the other competition left Amon Ra and Pittman were gone they asked him to move outside he took his yak and contested catch ability and downfield prowess to fucking dominate yeah. outside per- perks of being in a little bit different style of offense um I think was was you know in, in Drake's favor I think Burks played that offense great and I think that offense is kind of what Burks needs to be in like we talked about a lot last week um but you you got anything else that you want to want to throw I- into this Nah, I mean, I, I think Drake is almost a complete package. There's just not too much more that you would want from a prospect coming in, and except for maybe blazing speed, and, and there's just not yeah. – he's it's not Megatron. There's no more Megatron. Strong so. package here. Like you said, when our guy Angelo was on, he said Traylon Burks was the best jump ball receiver in the league. And I, I got to disagree. I got I to gotta give it to Drake. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I would th- again. I think the athleticism with Traylon is a little better, so maybe some of the spectacular catch is a little better. But I mean, right now Drake's jump ball looks like it's, it's and he's ma- got spectacular catches. Drake's, he's got Drake's jump ball looks balls. like it has a better floor, <laughs> right? Sure. Which that's not the end all be all. No, it's not no, just about not. the high point. If that was the case, then JJ Ortega Whiteside would be good. Huh. But he's got so much more than our Sega had. He's got the the agility and the fluidness and the intermediate game, and he can play in the slot and he can yak it up. It's just he's the complete package, right? You know, I, I'm I mean, really really excited about Drake London. He can get downfield and be your big play receiver. Maybe not like after the catch, like running past everybody, but then he could also you know death of a thousand paper cuts you down the field. Um, <laughs> so Angelo comped him to a, a Sutton, Cortland, a Sutton and another a, and London a sounding guy, and Cortland. I think, I think I like the Sutton comparison. Um, I, I don't hate that at all. How about some T. Higgins? T. Higgins, uh, uh, yeah. I, Pittman uh, could be a good one. I, I, I T's think he's probably more athletic. I think T might be a, a hair more athletic, possibly. But if you could tell me I get T. Higgins in this draft, yeah, he'd probably be the one one, right? I think yeah. Mike Evans is is what a lot of people have talked about. And, Mike and he has talked about. I Mike think Evans that's, would I think be that's the one great, one in this draft, although he doesn't get enough respect. No, eight eight straight seasons of a thousand yards. That guy's just. Habitually hate underrated, right. disrespected um, for no reason. And then in one of the videos, the the safety for, um, or the corner for for Notre Dame is shouts Notre about Dame, as maybe yeah. Keenan Allen kind of guy. Yeah, gave him some credit for Keenan Allen, which, which you that's... know not the most overly athletic guy, but just knows how to win at every point in the field. So you know, I could get it, I could dig it. Um, all right. Anything else you got? I mean, I appreciate you guys listening. We're going to be banging out these uh, draft profiles hopefully every week and uh, bringing you some some breakdowns of the rookies that just ended their first NFL season and doing as some well mocks. Keeping and, tabs on ADPs and yep. getting you some targets to trade for for uh, early off season. Maybe Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, yeah. So if you're listening on the YouTube, please give me a subby and, and hit the comments. If you like, disagree, agree with anything we said, that helps the algorithm. If you're listening on the podcast, please head over to iTunes and, and hit us with that five-star review. That would be so kind of you. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Please and thank you. Um, and and hit the comments below if, if there's somebody you want us to uh, yeah, let us try know to who break you down. I'm not going to say we're going to absolutely jump on it, but it might help us. We're up in the air who we're doing next. So it might help us. Uh, Could have been Jameson. Uh, huge bummer for yeah. him to go out with that ACL. But. Terrible. Terrible. But, I mean, it's an ACL, and it didn't look like an egregious tear. So, yeah. Hopefully you know. not. Hopefully not. Hopefully he bounces back stronger. And uh, there's a bummer. We got Devonta Smith last year, and we got Jameson this year. Um, Jameson a little and, I mean, worse off. Drake's coming off a bad injury, too. Fractured ankle. He's yeah. just a little bit more removed from it. I so. didn't talk about that enough. but Right. Does that bother you? No. Nah. Yeah. That's why we didn't really talk about it that much. All right, guys. We appreciate y'all. Peace.